So let's talk about a little bit the story and how do a chemistry and engineering started to develop. So chemistry, once again, is the study of science and engineering is the application of that knowledge and many other knowledge, of course. So it all starts, let's say, in the old ages. These guys wanted to turn, let's say, the Bronze Age. They understand how metal works, how uh, heating it, and they can change it. So they start understanding the material, solid state. They even thought fire was another state of matter, air, liquid, and so on. So they start understanding, and I think those are the earliest chemists, even though it's not formal knowledge, it's just understanding. Then this guy right here, Democritus, probably you know him, he started to think about this crazy theory that everything is done of this little stuff or material that eventually you cannot split something. That you cannot be splitting and splitting and splitting infinitely. So you eventually need to start, the, uh, sorry, to end up in the end. Now this guy right here, he started to do some more formal knowledge, a little bit more on experimentation and reporting its results and understanding, so thinking a lot. So this was more about philosophy. He was thinking and theoretical models and let's say hypotheses and so on. And right now, this guy is stating, okay, even though that's what I think, this is what happens. So more of a formal study. And then this guy right here, this Lavoisier starts understanding the gases because this guy, if I recall, uh, he was a rich guy. He loved doing experiments and like a hobby. It was like a hobby for him because doing glassware and writing and knowing and Latin was very, very exotic. So this starts, and I will say this is especially the chemist knowledge. You can see also they start working on Alchemy, alchemy is the art or science or whatever you want to call it of turning materials into other awesome materials. So for instance, turning lead to gold. So they start understanding the elements, the metals and so on. Now that's about chemistry old ages. In the old ages, engineering was not actually that sophisticated. We got these, let's say, breweries. I love brewery because it's about theory on chemistry, biology, all the gist. Also engineering because you want to have temperatures, yield, raw materials, energy balances, even though they didn't actually know how it was more like a recipe, following a recipe of food, they were actually starting to do their equipment for engineering. And this is another example, mining. Uh, you know guys, gold and silver were the most traded metals on the old ages. So the more you could find gold, the more you could find silver, the more money you make. So a lot of mining is going on in these ages. Also food, let's say this is, I think this was cheese. The old ways, how to do cheese, how to transform. Especially I love that the food industry, they do a lot of engineering because they want to maybe let's say you have meat and you want to keep it for the winter because you know that in winter all the let's say animals go away so you hunting will be harder so what you do is let's say beef jerky so you can add some salts and dehydrate some of the meat and it will last longer so this is a chemical process very interesting one and the engineering is that you could sell that to other uh, other of you people and well a direct application is that they will eat protein in the winter and they will be healthy so those were the old ages now i will say that there's no huge difference between this side which is chemistry and this other side which is engineering so they were very related when they start to separate it's in the 1800s with the Industrial Revolution. And as the name implies, we start doing industrial stuff for industrialists and machines and building huge amounts of material. And as Henry Ford stated, the manufacturing line, the more you can produce and automate, the cheaper it will get.
So now chemistry starts being a very formal science. They even have the Nobel Prizes and chemistry for war. Probably you remember World War One, in which chlorine and other chemicals were crucial. Actually, chemical warfare is now prohibited, but in the World War One, it was a very crucial, of very crucial importance. And maybe later I would talk about Hover and its processes, because literally the guy that could produce the cheapest, deadliest, let's say toxic, and a very a lot of scale material, let's say chlorine gas or nervous gas, whatever, mustard gas, whatever gas you can imagine of warfare, well, will win the war because these you should see some videos guys, they just open it in the air, they kill a lot of guys, or at least they irritate them so bad that they need to go, they cannot uh, fight longer. So that's when chemistry starts being of great importance. But once again, once you know chlorine is deadly for people, you need to translate into the world of the engineer. So they start wondering how to in increase the yield, how to increase production, how to make it cheaper, how to make it safer for the guys working with that. So that's more into the engineering part. So hopefully you get the idea that once you get this product right here, you want to make it cheap in mass for the war and so on. So I think this is a very good example on what where the chemistry relies. You need to maybe understand gases, how high pressure, low temperatures, catalysts will help the chlorine or ammonia be produced and now once you know it, let's make it real. Let's make it and let's produce huge amounts. Let's make money an issue. Let's make time an issue. Because if I tell you that it's very cheap and it's very easy to produce, but you will require a lot of time. Well, we are at war. We need everything for right now. So this is how they start separating chemical engineering and chemistry. So one is starts going for the industry and chemistry stays for the science, for the love of understanding what's behind substances and making new materials. Engineering is more about making the equipment to make it in huge scales. Now as this is the modern age, I will say that chemistry is now fully separated. Well, they're not fully separated, but you can identify very easily a chemist lab and a chemical plant. Chemical plant is huge, they're making huge amounts of uh, reactions, separations, pumping, uh, storages, a lot of material and of course a lot of money is going there. This is more for research, some guy is making some research or maybe a master student making a thesis or even a doctor and what they want to do is understand the materials and make new materials for the maybe for a good a greener cause or better environmental and stuff and eventually what the engineer is doing is making this stuff real so it's a relationship between each other maybe you say hate and love yes maybe yes this guy right here needs about the chemistry he needs new materials to be in innovative and be able to uh, let's say place new products in the marketplace but if they don't make money, then they cannot pay the chemist to make more research and develop. And so that's the place in which you start having the ping pong. So this guy right here has the ball, he makes a move, and then this guy right here start doing the move, and then it's an, a cycle. So that's why it's very important to have the understanding that chemists and chemical engineers are pretty, let's say, into the same, but they have different applications. So Hopefully, I think the best example was this one right here on the war. So you want to win the war, you don't want to know about chemistry, you just want to win the war. You need that to be cheap, time, and scale. How do you get this? Well, you need to make some research, go with these guys and ask them what's the best place to do that, the best materials, raw materials, and so on. So that's a little bit on history and how chemists and engineers started to develop, especially in the 1800th century.